Welcome back everyone. We are just about to get matched up here with our first two battlers of the night. We're gonna have Scarlet Skill versus Eric. Yeah, I am super excited for this battle. Um, uh, Eric is one of my TPL teammates and has been playing really well this season. And I know Scarlet was on the team that we have ju just lost to this past week. So I am very excited to see if we can get some TPL revenge here and just two <laughs> great players playing against each other. Yeah, and excuse me, I just realized our overlays are still from last week. Let me go ahead and update that one for us real quick here. Uh, but in the meantime, do you wanna go ahead and start and talk through a little preview of these two teams, Chase? Yeah, so from Scarlet's side, we see Tapu Fini, Reggie Alecki, Garchomp, Incineroar, Kartana, and uh, Moltres. From Eric's side, we see also Reggie Alecki, Moltres, and Incineroar, but instead we see Urshifu, Spectre, and Whimsicott as the last three. Yeah, a lot of overlapping uh, types of Pokemon here. And these are two players I think that are fairly uh, familiar with each other. Mm -hmm. I know we haven't seen it yet because they're still waiting on their link code. But if you had to guess, what do you think that Tapu Fini's item is? Uh, okay, if I had to guess this Tapu Fini, looking at the rest of the team, um, I would probably guess either Leftovers or it could potentially be a Choice Specs variant with something like Light Clay on the Alecky or Sash on the Alecky. Now, I may be a little bit crazy here, but I'm going to guess that it is Choice Scarf Tapu oh, Fini. Oh, a Choice Scarf Tapu Fini. Are we, are we about to see some uh, interesting self-proc options <laughs> with the Moltres or the uh, um, the Garchomp? I feel like that would be a really risky play. Uh, I don't think that's what the Scarf is for, and I'm not going to be revealing this if it is not Scarf, but for some reason I have just this little <laughs> inkling that it could potentially be Scarf Tapu Fini. And yeah. if not, then we'll just go about our day as if it, I never said anything. <laughs> yeah, excited to see. Oh, okay, looks like uh, Rollercoast has got a little guest coming here in the chat. Um, I believe we're going to do a prediction here for game number one. Uh, Woke Flossy typically runs our predictions. There we go. Prediction has now started. So if y'all want to bet, um, sorry, not bet. It is not betting is what I've been told by Twitch. Um, this is a prediction. You're just trying to predict to see who will win, and you have the opportunity <laughs> to win some channel points. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so it looks like I'm wrong on this uh, this Scarf Fini with the soak here. But that is something I've been seeing with these six specifically on the ladder. So if you are playing and you see something with Regilecki, Kartana, Fini, be careful of the option of Scarf Soak. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, definitely something you got to be pretty careful about. I ran into a Scarf um, Inteleon uh, next to the Regilecki. The kind of benefit was I just sort of all my friends are deaded. The... Uh, Inteleon, and then it was just stuck into Scarf Soak. Um, yeah. And then it was an Inteleon on top of that. So, like, not that threatening. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. I think a Tapu Vini puts on a lot more pressure having some actual offensive presence, I, 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 some actual bulk, as opposed to purely offensive presence like an Inteleon does. Mm hmm. Yeah, and the issue is those teams just consistently lose to speed control or redirection. So, like, they're not something you're going to very, like, consistently win with. Um, although, if you catch your opponent off guard one time and you maybe get a KO with a Volt Switch as they try to use a ground move into you and you switch into your ground immunity, then you can be good from there. But in a best of three, it's a little bit more difficult to make work. Yeah, for sure. Uh, we know that a lot of people here are going to be prepping for the upcoming Players' Cup 3 qualifier, which kicks off this Thursday night, I believe at 7 p.m. Um, is that 7 p.m. Eastern or? I think it's 7 Central. So 7 Central. Is that... Six? No, eight Eastern? Eight, eight I don't Eastern, know. yeah. I, maybe it's, seven, maybe it it's seven Eastern, I don't know. <laughs> if y'all know, never place remember. in the chat. <laughs> it's 4 p.m. PST, so that's six east, six Central and seven Eastern. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so, uh, you know, people are prepping their best of one strategies here, so we could be seeing some potential folks testing out kind of last second. Obviously, a slightly different format here with Monday Night Finley's being a best of three as opposed to a best of one, but still a good, good opportunity to get practice with your team. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, here we see the leads with the Incineroar and the Regilecki uh, against the opposing Whimsicott and um, Galarian Moltres. What do you think about those leads, Chase? Uh, I would tend to say that this Moltres is in a pretty decent position to just get an airstream off and like in a tailwind or a tailwind in a darkness uh, because the Regilecki is not going to want to attack into this Moltres for the chance that it is weakness policy Moltres, even doing like 65% into it. You, it just will get KOs at that point. Yeah. So, um, 
That, that's the scariest part about Moltres, especially being weakness policy. If you, if you can do enough to a Dynamax to get it over half, you're not just going to be giving it plus two, you're giving it that plus three with a Berserk boost. Mm -hmm. My favorite uh, thing that I've seen in the past month or so of VGC is the uh, the coin, the term that I'm not sure who started it, but I haven't seen it that much, is Schrodinger's Moltres, <laughs> where it's always going to be plus two, whether you, you have to decide whether to target it and uh, it Dynamaxes and gets plus two off weakness policy, or you don't target it, and Nasty Plots and gets plus two off of that. Yeah, so we see Scarlet here actually read into that Protect on the Moltres, going for a Fake Out, followed by the Volt Switch into the Whimsicott. Sadly, not enough to go ahead and get the um, the KO uh, through a potential Sash on that uh, Whimsicott, but uh, that does leave the Whimsicott um, still able next turn to go for any kind of Prankster moves it would have otherwise mm -hmm. this turn. Yeah, and importantly enough, we realize that the Whimsicott is not an uh, eject button, which it generally is not on a team like this, but um, you just you do know now, so you don't have to be worried about Trick in the future. Yeah, and I feel like when you see an opposing uh, fake out setter and you are Trick Room, you tend to be a lot more cautious and go for things like um, go for things like Helping Hand or immediately switch out. Here we yeah. see an immediate aggressive play from Eric going for the Tailwind plus a Nasty Pot, getting <laughs> immediately to plus two. Uh, and Scarlet responds with the Calm Mind getting up a plus one on both special defense and special attack of his own, so. Mm -hmm. So it's, this is an interesting thing here that does, the real question now is does this uh, Whimsicott have something like a fake tears? Because if it has a fake tears, then Eric is in a really good position being able to max and just attack into the Feeny with fake tears plus an attack. But if not, it's a pretty difficult position because the Feeny could potentially just call mind again, or it could Dynamax and Starfall into the Moltres. Yeah, this Moltres probably wants to get another attack boost. The fact that it's Nasty Pot uh, leads me to believe that it's maybe not a uh, weakness policy. I feel like a lot of the weakness policy sets don't rely as much on the Nasty Pot, but um, we have been seeing some mixing of that as well. Yeah, it's, it, generally Nasty Plot is your best fourth move on um, Moltres. You can, I mean, you can run Ancient Power, you can run Taunt, but just having the ability to, even in late games, when you like get Parting Shot at a couple of times, you can just Nasty Plot your way up, yeah. back to neutral, back to plus two, and just win end games there, even if you don't use it as an offensive, like, early game strategy. Yeah, we see an immediate switch out with that Reggie Lucky, uh, opting not to go for any kind of attack, but hard switch into the Incineroar, um, not that the Incineroar really is uh, doing a whole lot with its Intimidate against these two Pokemon, but it does establish Fake Out Pressure for next turn. Yeah, and more importantly, it takes the Max Darkness that was probably going into that Regieleki slot. Yeah. So, the, the one interesting thing here though is, if it is Max Darkness into the Aleki slot, then Incineroar is now in uh, Airstream range because it gets the minus one special defense from the Max Darkness. Yeah, and we know this isn't an Assault Vest variant on the Incineroar, we've already seen the Parting Shot, so... Uh, we actually see the fake tears. Looks like it is correctly targeting into that Tapu Fini. Going to be avoiding any kind of prankster dark type blocking effects of that Incineroar as the fake tears max air stream is enough to just go and pick up the one hit KO on that Tapu Fini. The Calm Mind, uh, you know, it, it helped it uh, sit there for a turn, but not really helping mm -hmm. it in terms of bulk or any kind of offensive presence against this Moltres. Yeah, Calm Mind is, in a re is a really great set when you're, ever your opponent doesn't have a move that drops stages or boost stages by two stages when you're facing off against things like max steel spike or uh, max quake then you can just call mine and kind of stall stuff out and then attack it afterwards uh, but when they have like a nasty plot or um, fake tears or in this case both uh, it's a bit <laughs> tougher to get uh, damage off yeah really hyper offensive with his Moltres here a lot of options that it can go for when combined uh, right now, though, not going to be seeing any kind of fake tears action because both of these Pokemon on Scarlet's side of the field are dark type, so not going to be able to get any prankster moves off into either of those. Mm -hmm. I think we could just be... Honestly, like, I know both are dark type. It could be interesting here to see a max darkness just getting the, the drops for later, although I assume you just, like, helping hand airstream or moonblast airstream into the Incineroar. So, we do see the moonblast. Yep, uh, Moonblast into the Airstream, and that Incineroar actually lives just on barely any HP right there. That's got to be pretty rough for Eric, probably expecting to get that KO. Um, the <laughs> parting shot from earlier on in the game putting in a lot of work, especially now that Incineroar is going to go ahead and get its Citrus Berry health recovery back. Yeah, and now having the ability to parting shot a second time into this Moltres, dropping it to neutral, is going to be really tough for Eric to now get enough damage output to deal with 
the combination of the Reggie Alecki plus the opposing Moltres, which has two turns of Dynamax left. Yep. Excuse me one second while I just go ahead and stop one thing. I noticed a little bit of lag. I'm just going to go and make sure our servers are in uh, tip top shape. There we go. I think we are back and uh, back at full capacity here. So, uh, yeah, the pivoting here with that parting shock and bringing that, uh, that Galarian Moltres that went for the Nasty Pod back on down to neutral now. Um, and it doesn't, uh, it hasn't gotten any max darkness drops onto any of Scarlet's Pokemon. Um, so gonna be in a really good, uh, Scarlet's in a good position with the Dynamax advantage. We see the mm. last Pokemon here being the Urshifu water type. Yeah, that's really interesting here because it makes it a lot freer to attack into the Regieleki slot with your Urshifu, knowing that if the Incineroar switches in, it's still going down to the Surging Strikes or the Close Combat. Yeah, and, and already having the speed boost advantage with two max airstreams already, definitely in a position where mm -hmm. I you know it's not gonna be able to you're gonna be able to get a bunch of damage down onto something this turn. Yeah, and the question is, like we know that the Whimsicott wasn't focus sash, or I mean it wasn't eject button, so it was probably focus sash, meaning is this a banded water or shifu or is it potentially another item? Yeah, I feel like typically you tend to see the Focus Sash, because uh, I feel like most water Urshifu tend to be run on Colossal teams nowadays. Uh, but yeah, a lot of different options here. It could be something, it could be Mystic Water, or um, I don't know, I haven't seen that a whole bunch, but I know that Black Classes has been t trending up a little bit with the Dark Urshifu. But really, it goes uh, Choice Band, Focus Sash, and then every other item. Yeah. Um, I know there was a team back in the beginning of this series that was Koba Berry on urshifu um it was urshifu water mm. but that was like one specific team and i'm not particularly sure how common that would be as the metagame goes on because it that urshifu also had u-turn and rock slide which yeah. was very strange uh so we do see right here uh that this uh urshifu does pick up that ko we see the max airstream come out maybe we might get some information about what this urshifu's item is it just goes down immediately it doesn't look like it's koba berry it is not focus ash Looks like we're having a little bit more uh, lagging here. I'm going to try and fix that for us. Yeah. Well, in the meantime, we're Eric's down to his last... But, I mean, both players, I believe, are down to their last two Pokemon. Um, Scarlet still has one turn left to Dynax and the Regieleki to pressure um, pretty much everything uh, yeah. because there's not a single time that Regieleki doesn't pressure, even resist. The only thing it doesn't pressure is ground types. And, oh, we have Regieleki and Regieleki versus Moltres <laughs> and Moltres. Uh, a true mirror match here. With yeah. one uh, slight exception that Scarlet Skill does still have uh, remaining turns of Dynamax here. And the other question is, does Eric still have Tailwind up? Yeah, that is a good question. I believe that it, at this point, I'm willing to bet that he doesn't. The Moltres should be, still be faster because it's already gotten three Max Airstream boosts, um, as opposed to, <laughs> we just saw, I think, a minus five on that Moltres. Was it minus five attack? Attack, yeah, yeah, on attack, which yeah. is just funny to see. Yeah, I mean, that's what you get when you get parting shotted twice and intimidated three times. <laughs> yeah, um, but with the opposing Regieleki, you're not super safe to go for something like a nasty plot here to try and get your boost up. Um, you might have to rely on something like being faster, going for Fiery Wrath and getting uh, a flinch onto the opposing Regieleki and then maybe try and uh, get some damage off. Um, yeah, with this Thunderbolt here. I think it just... Oh, it lives. Wow. It does live on 12 HP which I think is probably going to end up sealing this. Going to be pretty yeah. close to sealing it. Depends on what the move here is right here. Yeah, because at this point, even if the Aleki flinches, it is now faster than both the opposing Aleki and the Moltres at plus one. And uh, yeah, we see the Electro Web come off, and that should be enough to take both of the Pokemon either out oh, or now the Moltres is slower than Scarlet's Moltres and can just be picked off the following turn. Yeah, it does get its weakness policy boost here, so... Uh... I know it wants to go for that big fiery wrath next turn uh, back to neutral, I believe, right? Because it was at minus two, or uh, it's been so hard to keep track of all the parting shots. No, it was, uh, I believe, it was at neutral, so now it's at plus two. And plus three with the berserk. Yeah, and the berserk as well, getting procked by that, um, <laughs> getting procked by that electro web. So, yeah, it really just comes down here to, uh, I believe Scarlet did use all three of his Dynamax turns for a max airstream, so it should just be fast and can pick it off with the fiery wrath here. Mm -hmm. um, and that should go ahead and close out game number one. Yeah, as you're, you're like you'd, you'd have to dodge multiple 95% accurate moves, which wasn't out of the question, seeing as I believe we saw like five of them miss last week with the combination <laughs> of like Air Slash and Snarl and other things like that. I think we might have had our most uh, hacks filled sets last week. It was, it was one of our <laughs> biggest nights in terms of 
uh, native viewers, and I think that everyone just saw a lot of games where there was a lot of hacks going on, missing a lot of air slashes and things of that nature. Yeah, I think we saw a high horsepower miss. I think we saw... Um, is Frenzy Plant 95% accurate or is it 90% accurate? Um, I believe the the blast moves are 90, but I would probably want to double check on that. Most people yeah. don't run them to run them outside of Dynamax. They just run them for that big 150 base power move, so... <laughs> Yeah, okay, so you're saying in the chat it's 90. 90, okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. Hey, how's it going, JJ? So, uh, yeah, this is an interesting matchup here, like, looking back to it very quickly, because it really comes down to <laughs> the Regieleki and the Moltres Ace on both sides, both being weakness policy and both being specs, you would assume. <laughs> um, and it just comes down to either who can get in the right position, who can win speed ties, or however this is going to work so i'm not exactly sure what either player can do to partic particularly maneuver better maybe it's the incinerous parting shot plus fake out maybe it's the opposing tailwind plus fake tears it really just comes down to making all the right calls in these kind of almost complete mirror matches with the pokemon that they're bringing yeah and and looking at the type of the pokemon that you want to bring if you're both of them it it's gonna be mostly overlapping with the exception of that tapu fini um, and mm -hmm. just because, uh, you know, having that advantage there, pressuring a Pokemon that is super effective against it, uh, versus Eric having the, um, Spectre, a Pokemon that really doesn't want to try and catch a Galarian Moltres. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, at the, like, if you don't have a ground type on your team, you don't have a Specs Regia Lucky answer. Um, so, like, with both of these players not having ground... Oh, as we see, a big adjustment here yeah. with the Moltres lead. Yeah, leading the Moltres from Scarlet, uh, as well as Eric leading that Ghost Horse, getting, getting the Spectre in position right away. Uh, it is going to be threatened from this Moltres right here, so you do have to watch out for that. Something that, um, you know, and especially because Moltres is a dark type, you can't go for fake tears into it, despite mm -hmm. some of my best attempts on stream. Um, <laughs> where, like, I'm just like, oh, dope, this, this, this will definitely KO if I get a fake tears off, and then I'm like, uh, it's dark type. <laughs> Dark type, dark type, dark type, not fire type, as much as I want to look at it and say that's a flying fire bird. It is a flying dark bird. It's just Eveltal 2.0. <laughs> yeah, it is Eveltal, and uh, it just doesn't get Oblivion Wink, thank yeah. goodness. Oh, thank goodness, for sure. Um, yeah, so we do see here uh, the Incineroar switch in for that Regilecki, putting itself in a position um, to establish fake out pressure next turn, um, and the, uh, you know, not really going to be getting a whole lot out of this. Um, out of its Intimidate, but perhaps catching something like a Fake Tears uh, and blocking mm -hmm. it by being a Dark type. Yeah, um, interestingly, and we see Rollercoaster in the chat saying Moltres should get Regenerator, Berserk, and keep all its boosts when it switches out. Um, I think no. he just wants to ruin Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, I think that uh, Rollercoaster is constantly coming up with ideas of how to ruin Pokemon, so we do see her here on turn number one, the Moonblast is coming out directly into that Galarian Moltres, Gonna go ahead and risk the weakness policy proc immediately, uh, but having a Pokemon that is faster than that Galarian Moltres, if it follows up with something that's able to KO here, uh, that's gonna be really big, as the primary answer to Spectre from Scarlet is this uh, Galarian Moltres. Yeah, and this Galarian Moltres was just defeated by a Spectre, so uh, <laughs> didn't really do its job. The uh, that is not something you see every day. Uh, the the, <laughs> the Galarian Moltres counter Spectre. Um, <laughs> It is yeah. nice that you can go for both of those moves. I'm curious what, what happens there if Moltres decides to just go ahead and Dynamax. Yeah, that makes it a lot tougher because <laughs> then now you have plus two Moltres just Oko-ing Spectre. But um, Eric made the call thinking that Scarlet would try to play it passive and get an auto win if the turn goes right. Uh, but interestingly enough now, a Max Quake just picks up a KO this turn. Um, you would probably want a Max Quake into the uh, Incineroar knowing that the Spectre can Volt Switch. But Max Quick should pick up a KO, and then Spectre gets the plus two, and then it becomes unstoppable. Yeah, for sure. Really, the, the primary answer uh, for Scarlet being the Galarian Moltres, and now is in a position where uh, he doesn't have access to that Galarian Moltres. It went down to that combination of Moonblast plus Max Strike, which I, you know, I've looked at a lot of Spectre calcs. I don't think that uh, the Hyper Beam is going to be doing quite enough damage to a Max Moltres there. So really gutsy call paid off really well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's always interesting to see, like, the 
like the safe play is getting taken advantage of where scarlet made a play that like oh you're generally going to be safe with your moltres in front of a spectre you don't they're like you don't they have to worry about proccing the weakness policy but eric just goes ahead and says no if you're going to play safe i'm in a hole i need to play the best i can and i am now going to take advantage of this yeah for sure especially watching how that game one went where you know the pokemon uh the player that dynamax last was in the best position here in game number two uh not so much the case uh with eric just kind of picking off all of um, Scarlet's Dynamax options, kind of one by one, obviously Incineroar, not really a Dynamax option here, but uh, by boosting that special defense, being plus two special attack, I, you're not really threatened by a Tapu Fini, um, unless it's it, able to get a lot of Calm Mind boosts off. And even so, every time it Calm Mind boosts, it'll, it gets, instead of plus one special defense, it's getting minus one special defense with the fake tears. Exactly, yeah. The fact that uh, the combination of the Volt Switch and Fake Out again, we see not enough to take out this Whimsicott. Um, it's, you know, you're in a position where you gotta max either your uh, your Specs Regilecki or you have to max a Tapu Fini that's just gonna continually get its special attack or special defense dropped. We do see Scarlet go ahead and concede. All right, you got me here. Um, let's go ahead and go into game number three. <laughs> yeah, I think that was the right call. I think Dynamaxing the Run button was probably his best option there, getting it onto game three as fast as possible. <laughs> Um, and I guess, can can we talk about our, a potential Game 3 addition to this channel that we may be having soon? Yeah, let's talk about it. Last week, because of that huge hype train y'all set us on, uh, we did unlock another emote slot. We're in the process of designing right now, and we're looking at a potential for a Game 3 emote. Um, still trying to get, get an idea on what that might look like, but keep your eyes out here pretty pretty soon, so... Yeah, no, I, I, if you have suggestions, potentially you can give them to us. We, we're kind of thinking around what we should make the Game 3 emote, um, but we don't know exactly how to put that together yet <laughs> at this point. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so here, it looks like uh, Scarlet is locked in, ready to go for Game Number 3, realizing, okay, I cannot, <laughs> with with uh, Moltres as my only answer to Spectre, I can't, I can't leave it on an island like that again. I think that... Um, this time around, he's going to recognize if there is a threat of it getting KO'd immediately, he's going to probably be switching it out and pivoting into something that can take those attacks or something that is more um, susceptible, something that's more viable to, to give up in a game one. <laughs> um, so, yeah, let's see. I'm kind of curious exactly how Eric adjusts here, uh, knowing that uh, the, the lead last time was so surprising for Scarlet. We do see a Whimsicott Regilecki lead, which is a change from both game one and game number two into the Incineroar and the Moltres coming out yet again. Yeah, this is like a really interesting position now because this Alecky is probably Specs, as we saw from the previous game. Um, so it does Incineroar fake it out and just you you immediately max Darkness it and try to get that KO? Does the Regilecki max? Does the Whimsicott get the tail end up? There are so many different ways this turn can end. And uh, I mean, we just have to sit and watch. Yeah, I'm curious, how much does a, like a Max Lightning do from Reggie like if it does happen to Dynamax in this case? Um, I'm not particularly sure without the item I've been running, and it especially depends on the spread. Yeah. Uh, I've been running Magnet Regilecki, and people always try to fake it out thinking it's Specs, and you just Max Lightning the Moltres turn one and like Helping Hand, um, and it just gets the KO. I don't know if it gets it without the item boost. Uh, potentially, or without the helping hand boosts and things of that sort, but uh, Regilecki is very strong, especially when it's Dynamaxing. Yeah, we do see right off the bat here, it is the Regilecki gonna go ahead and Dynamax, so I guess we might get some information here about the item. Um, <laughs> gonna put itself in the probably the best position, anticipating that fake out. You can get something like a, a Tailwind off. Uh, we still don't know the fourth move on this Wimscott either. We've so far seen Tailwind Moonblast, um, as well as Fake Tears, but have we seen a fourth move from this Whimsicott? I do not think we have. The other thing here is, um, this Whimsicott could just go for a Moonblast and pick off the Moltres if the Max Lightning doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> Having both these Pokemon be faster than this Moltres, putting on a lot of pressure. Uh, we do see the Fake out here going to that Regilecki, which is Dynamax, gonna ignore that. A big Max Lightning coming out here. How much is it gonna do to this Moltres? That is not in Moonblast range, it's I don't think. Definitely not in Moonblast range, and this Whimsicott has to have gone for Moonblast uh, based on the, the fact that it hasn't gone for an attack yet. So, uh, really risky play here from Eric. Uh, this is one of the pieces about Galarian Moltres with that 125 base special defense. It's very chunky. Oh my gosh, oh, it, it was is in enough. range. 
Oh, critical oh, with hit. The crit. Uh, although I don't think it particularly mattered. It gets that KO, and then Eric brings in the Urshifu next, and Tailwind Surging Strikes, or even like pr predicts the Protect and Surging Strikes the Incineroar. Maybe Moonblast and Surging Strikes. Like, there's so many different options at that point. Yeah, doing uh, that much to the opposing Dynamax Pokemon, you know, giving it a plus three boost, um, but at the same time, getting that much damage onto it and being able to uh, put a lot of threats down. Uh, that was definitely a crazy uh, turn one play there for uh, Eric, and it looks like that's going to be enough for Scarlet, recognizing the rest of Scarlet's team really can't deal with this Max Regilecki, especially with fake tier support. Yeah, no, it turns out Eric decided the way to win this set was to just play as aggressive as possible. And um, when you play aggressive, you generally get the luck on your side because you're moving first. You're putting yourself in positions where crits benefit you more than they hurt you. And uh, that he, Eric just found out the best way to play was to just say, hey, I'm, if I get this wrong, I lose. If I get it right, I win. Yeah. And just get them all right. So uh, super, super well played by both players. Uh, I'm kind of curious how much that Moonblast uh, did matter, especially kind of the Moonblast crit did matter, but really mm -hmm. uh, well played by Scarlet and, you know, especially by Eric making those super aggressive reads. I like a lot of what you said too with the, by playing super aggressively, Eric puts himself in that position where going first will mean uh, so many opportunities for better things to happen. I think that's kind of similar to an article we have up on our website, correct? Uh, I do think we have some of the uh, pacing and uh, tempo of the game. Um, I have exclamation point. Is it exclamation point website to get to our yep. website? Exclamation point website. Yeah, there's a, an interesting article article about tempo um, and momentum up on there. So if you want to check out some cool written content, uh, that's a place to be.